All right, guys, now we have our entire Hot Poly model imported inside of Autodesk Maya. Now we can start working on some of the uh, retopology and things like that. And retopology is basically just um, creating a low poly version of your high poly mesh. So with that being said, this version you see in front of us right now, this high poly will only act as a reference for the low. So really quick, I'll just uh, hide all objects on this screen right now, except for the handle. And I'll show you guys one example of doing retopology. And this is really commonly used uh, when using shapes that are primitively formed, like this is a giant rectangle, you can see that. So I'll use a cube here, and once it's imported into the grid, I'll just upscale it and then match it to the length and width of the handle. And I'll add edge loops and uh, things like that where I see it needs to be so we don't have too much faceting going on because the, the overall goal is just to have a low poly version sit on the grid exactly where the high poly is occupied. And once we're complete with this stage, we'll just um, add our edge loops and I'll just do a side by side reference so you guys can actually see this. So I'll duplicate this or I'll just move this over so you can see the high poly next to the low poly. You see they're in the same space, they're the same size. It just doesn't have that detail of that nail on the center. And this is just one way of doing retopology in any 3D application. Now this is Quadraw. This is unique to Maya. And other programs can do it like ZBrush. It's when you make your high poly live and you can start creating faces on top of your high poly model. And you can see where this could be beneficial but me personally, for a basic primitive shape like this, you would probably want to do the method we did prior to this. It looks good and you can definitely get a good result, but I like my lines nice and clean, so I just used a uh, cylinder and I did basically the same thing I did the first time. And this yields a great result because ni everything's nice and even, especially when you're doing something uh, cylindrical like this. And you can see side by side, it looks really good. Now this next option I call Fusion Maya Low Poly Hack. And this is a extreme way of cutting down time uh, focusing on retopology. So I have this iron side here, the high poly. Now to create the low poly, I go back into Fusion 360, I delete all of the fillets and rounded surfaces, and then I export a low poly version. You only get the rear triangulation when there's fillets. So I kind of deleted the, the fillets and I exported this out and I'll just go to File, Import, and import the new low poly that we just exported from Fusion 360. And I'll just slide this over so you can see the comparison from the high poly and the low poly I just exported. Now this is like perfect, guys. And don't worry about the, the, the lines that go inside, the triangulation, because if you work in game art, you know that any model you bring into a game engine will be triangulated anyway, right? So what about the UVs? So if I just solo this and I go to UV, UV Editor, now go to create automatic it creates the automatic uvs with no it's like this is almost perfect uvs so if i press Control l it'll pack them so all i have to do now is just scale this down really quickly and it fits in the uh one to one ratio now this isn't to say that this is the best method but if you are on a time scale and you need to get something pushed through from Fusion 360 into game ready version, this is one way to go about doing that. And you still need to know how to do retopology using Quadraw because employers want to know that you know how to do the job.